years ago since London 2012 Paralympics. It's pretty scary to think like that, really, because I feel, feel like it was like yesterday. Um, I think going into the Paralympics and especially London 2012, I, I think for me, I knew it was going to be big. As soon as coming back from Beijing 2008, four years previously, I knew that the countdown was on, that the excitement that the not just the country, but the media, the, the countdown was on. And so I, I felt that excitement four years before the game. So I knew it was going to be huge. And being able to be part of that, like the sponsorship that we had, um, the likes of knowing that the tickets had been sold and it was going to be amazing. And yeah, it was just, you could feel that excitement. And it was, I just knew as well as being an athlete and being focused and getting that buzz of training so, so hard for one of the biggest sport in events of your career, but know it's gonna, knowing it's going to be a home games is just so exciting, but also nerve wracking too with the pressure. And I think you don't realise that like, Pressure is huge, but also knowing that you're the face of the games and you're about to be go out there and performing not just British spectators, but friends, family, individuals that have never actually ever seen you race and you're about to race at the Paralympics and a home Paralympics. It's, it's scary, it's nerve-wracking, but there's that, that buzz and that adrenaline rush and it's so, so excited. But yeah, I knew that London 2012 was, was going to be big, but I didn't know it was going to be as big as it was. Yeah, I can't. I can't believe it was 10 years ago. I'm definitely not that old. I've not been doing this sport that <laughs> surely. Um, it does feel like yesterday, absolutely. I think my position going into London was, was well, completely the opposite to Ellie's, to be honest. London was not even on the radar for me until a year out. Kind of, I went to my first World Championships in 2011, January 2011, became double world champion, much to everyone, including my surprise, um, up until that point, I was, you know, I was 19 years old, I was 20 in London, um, I'd only been racing for, I started racing in 2008, so after Beijing, I'd not been racing for very long at all, so London was kind of like this, I bought tickets to go and watch, like, I wanted to go and watch it, I was never going to be, <laughs> yeah, 2011, it got decided, right, we're going to fast track here, like, you're going to London, um, and I think because I had the build up, obviously from Beijing up until 2011, as as just going to be a spectator, it was so exciting. Like, ah, oh, the games are coming home. Like, like they're coming to to our country. We can go and watch all these amazing sports. All these people are going to be in London, and I was just buzzing to go and watch loads of different sports. So, to then kind of in a year turn it around and, and be on that start line was. It was phenomenal. It was the most incredible, incredible time. If you know, people always say, "Oh, it was the best time of your career," and I think people kind of expect London to have been overtaken by something now, um, but it definitely hasn't. I think just, yeah, I expect it to be be big. I knew it was going to be big. I had no pressure on me going to London, so you know, I was just this new girl on the start line. And I think the amazing thing was that whether you came first, whether you came last, whether you were somewhere in between people cheered for you. They were just mm. buzzing to be there. They just wanted to watch sport. They wanted to see all these athletes and yeah, being in, in being kind of not in the build-up of that and then suddenly really in the build-up of that was just such a contrast, but it was just the most incredible time. So yeah, I knew London was going to be amazing and it definitely didn't let us down, I don't think. <laughs> Do you think London for you was bigger because not just because it was a home games, but because it was your first games. I think you hear athletes talking that normally their first games are the most memorable one because they've got no expectations. They don't know what a Paralympics is like. Like you hear it from your teammates, other individuals talking about it. But when you walk through the village and you see it's 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 a multi-sporting event, there's nothing really like it. And it was... London was London, but also your first games. Do you think that was seen different? You know what? I think that's such a hard question to answer because I always think now, having been to Rio and then Tokyo, I always kind of wish London wasn't my first games because I don't feel like I appreciated it for what it was, which was, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I felt like it was the biggest, it's the biggest games I've been to. Oh, biggest, yeah, extremely. Everything. And I think when I was in London, because it was my first games, I was like, this is what Paralympics is. This is what it's always like. We always have 80,000 people. We always have all this sponsorship. We we always have all this support. And then going to Rio, 
I remember walking into the village and and the whole game's just been a bit like, oh, this is this is totally different. This is not London. This is this is quieter. This is smaller. Like it was still amazing in its own ways, but I remember coming out from Rio and and in all honesty, being a bit like, I don't know. If, I don't know if I want to do this again. I don't know if I want to go to Tokyo if it's not going to be like London. Um, hey, if we all had hindsight, maybe I would have quit. But uh, if we all could see in the future, sorry, I, maybe I would have quit at that point. <laughs> Tokyo, I thought, was going to be huge. And, and obviously the pandemic threw that out of the window. But yeah, I, I'm i almost the opposite. I almost wish that I'd gone to Beijing and then I could have mm-hmm. appreciated and, and remembered more of London rather than, you know, I went to London and I was... <laughs> you'll have seen it all the time. Like I was the athlete running around doing everything. I wanted to do every activity. I wanted to swap all the pins and get all the kids. I wanted to do everything. And actually, like, I think if I'd have been to Beijing, I would have realised like London was, was something special. Whereas I went to Rio expecting. The same. Yeah, a rego, a, a redo of the games. And, and it definitely wasn't. So yeah, I don't know, a tough one. But I mean, how did you, how did you find London in comparison to previous games? Did you feel um, like big as I think it was yeah no exactly the case Um, and I think as well you compare it don't you and also as well you forget sometimes that each games they are different because again it's it's different countries they put their own spin on it but for me uh London like like you said Hannah London 2012 was my favorite games if I could go back in a heartbeat and experience it all and also I think because it was London 2012 and like you Sometimes I wish I took it in more. I actually wish that I was able to just sit down and stop and focus and and enjoy the whole experience because as an athlete, you're just looking forward all the time and you're just so focused on, you get that one event done and you're always looking at the next. We're actually just sitting back and soaking in the, the podium and walking out in front of, like you said, 80,000 in the stadium, but in the swimming pool, it was 17,000. We've not had anything similar since. Like, I remember, like, the nerves in the call room. I was like, yeah, feeling sick. I, I want to swear with how, how, how I was feeling. But when you go out and you're soaking it in and you're getting that adrenaline and that, that feeling, it was just phenomenal. And you hope then that the other games are going to be like that, but they're not. So I think for me, I wished that I'd taken it in more, that I was able to stop and soak it all in and also take more photos. I, I thought I did, but sometimes having the photos actually jogs you of the memories because there's so many things when like, I talked to like you or other athletes who, who were at the games, like you're like, oh yeah, I remember that. I remember like the, um, the food hall or I remember like the McDonald's in the food hall or I remember um, the, the games room and you actually forget all those little bits that actually made the games and like the games makers too, they were British and that was really nice because they were, they were able to give you a bit of like advantage and show you the best places and have that personal touch. And I think, yeah, it was definitely the most incredible games. And I hope that previously individuals and sports learnt from it, but I think they did in their own way, but London 2012 showcased Paralympic sports. And I think we were then seen as professional athletes, weren't we? And it's, it's, it, it put Paralympic sport on the map. Oh, massively, I totally agree. Like. I think at this point, I think I must have met every single person of that 80,000 uh, person audience. They yeah. might like me and they go, I was there the night you won gold. And I'm like, oh my God, you must be 80,000 now. Like we must be there. But the amount of people who are just like, you know what? I've never watched Paralympic sport. I've never been interested in it. And I've followed you ever since then. I've followed, I follow you on Instagram. I follow all these other events. I've, I've been to the world champs in X, Y, and Z. And you know, I've had people that came to London and then they were just like, London was amazing. So they came to Rio and then they bought tickets for Tokyo. And I think, I don't, I don't know if a game's ever had that impact before. You know, that that huge following of, ultimately, it definitely made me a household name. You know, it definitely kind of put me on that map of, of an athlete that people might know. Um, but it, it was just, it was just incredible. Like, I know, I know exactly what you mean. Like, I... I think I will remember the moment sitting on the podium in Tokyo forever. But all in, for- in Tokyo. In Tokyo. But if you ask me, the question I probably get asked most is how does it feel to win in London and what does it feel like on that podium? And I I can't I don't know the answer. I don't know if you know the answer, but I can't remember that moment <laughs> because 
everything was so busy it was such a whirlwind I was just like oh yeah like anti-doping yeah finish the race yeah. let's go and do this and you just kind of sit there and like my biggest memory from London was going back to my room after winning my first gold medal I got back at like midnight all my roommates were in bed and I just went and sat in those you remember those little living room areas we had I just went <laughs> I would like stared at this medal like oh wow I wish I had someone to talk to about this and it's it's weird that that you know you spoke about having a moment of, of just like reflection and soaking it all in and that's the moment I remember most is sitting down and thinking I've done it like I've, I've yeah. done it but I don't remember all the, the big stuff I don't remember like collecting the medal and like I've met the guy who gave me my medal and he was like oh do you remember and I'm <laughs> <laughs> no, oh that's so fun but, but also as well that makes it personal then though don't, doesn't it because that you remember that one moment sitting looking at your medal and that will stay with you for the rest of your life whereas people other individuals other athletes they've got their own little personal stories because everyone stands on that per well not every athlete but every athlete who's achieved that that silver the bronze that gold they have that moment but then that personal touch afterwards is is that memory that will stay with you for the rest of your life oh definitely yeah absolutely but I kind of part of me wants to just do it again so I can remember it yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah no definitely someone could say to you to me um do you want to do London 2012 all again I would but also as well I don't know how I'd cope with the pressure now especially being 10 years older how did how did you find the pressure or did you say you didn't feel the pressure because it was your first game so did you still feel the pressure well, you know what I didn't feel any pressure oh I, did you not no going in like I'd obviously been part of the superhuman advert with you um but it all just felt like fun it all like it <laughs> told to me the whole way through was like there's no expectation it's your first games no one's expecting you to win just go and enjoy it and that's exactly what I did I don't remember at any point really feeling nervous oh wow oh, oh no. I wish you had some of my nerves then <laughs> I just remember like you know I even remember some of my teammates like at the holding camp being like I'm so nervous like I feel oh, they must wow. have felt nervous for a month and that must have been a worse feeling but I was just like holding cabs the holiday with my friends got to the village and it was just it was just incredible so I was yeah just the kid running around everywhere and I yeah I remember like my race day and getting into like first call second call I just remember through every other girl was just getting like paler and paler quieter oh, wow. quieter and I was just chatting to every games maker, every volunteer, every official, like, hi, how are you doing? Oh, wow. um, and yeah, I I'll, I'll always remember like just I remember one of the one of the um like call room people was actually my first ever school games coach. And she was like, Hannah, we could pick you out a mile off because you're the only person in this room smiling. And I was just sat in the call room, like the biggest grin on my face, because every time I heard the crowd outside, I was like, I cannot wait to get there but um I know what you mean like now put me in that situation now and I would be trembling in my boots like yeah every year since then I've got more and more nervous but that game's nerves were a thing I just, just wanted to enjoy it and I think for me I'm so thankful that I was in that situation where there was no pressure like I was literally there to do what I loved and and to enjoy it and thankfully it was successful <laughs> the thing is if it wasn't it wouldn't have mattered so yeah. yeah that's so nice I was totally the opposite to you I was in that cool room thinking can I just be somewhere else rather than this whereas <laughs> like for my first games in Beijing I was like you I was so excited again no pressure just was like I just cannot wait to race it was like just a, a local uh, school games because gala or, or a gala on the weekend it was just like yeah it's a I'm, I'm on my summer holidays in Beijing like this is amazing whereas London 2012 was the total opposite for me I remember just being that I wasn't like smiling like you I was just being like listening to my music being like shaking thinking oh my gosh um every time you go through that call room the different rooms I remember I'm oh wow I'm one step closer to going out, out there can I go backwards like things like that and it's so so funny how we've both got a different perspective on that type of thing but how, how did you, you mentioned about the Superhumans ad, how did you find that? I loved it. I loved being Yeah, a, it was so it, good. It was so different. I remember like 
when the posters started going up around the country, I've got a picture of my brother. Um, he literally pulled up at some traffic lights and there was my poster. It's the first time he'd seen it. So he sprinted out the car. He's got no shoes on. He sprinted out the car and he's like, like pointing at the poster underneath it. And then he sprinted back in with all the traffic lights changed. And just, it was crazy. Like people were sending me my picture, obviously posted up in Sainsbury's and there were just billboards and people were just sending me all these pictures. And I, it was just mind blowing that I was part of it. Um, and I did, I did, I genuinely loved it. I genuinely thought mm, it was the coolest thing ever. Because I think it's it's so different to how we've previously been portrayed. As Paralympians, it's always like, here's the past story, here's what happened. And actually, Superhumans was, was about, like, look what they're doing. Like, it doesn't matter what's happened. Look at what they're doing. Look at what they've done. Look at what they're about to do. And, it, yeah, it made me... I, I love superheroes. Uh, superheroes. <laughs> um so yeah, to be turned into one was pretty awesome. Yeah, it was. And I loved, you know, uh, I don't know about you, but I loved, you know, when it said like the, the Olympics were on, but then it was like, thanks for the warm up. Like for me, that's something that I will never, ever forget. Do you know? Because it was like, it was, it was like, thanks the Olympians, thanks to Team GB, thanks to all of you guys. I love watching you on TV. I love watching the opening ceremony and seeing what the environment's going to be like and how it's going to be work but now it's us now and we're the we're the main stars do you know what I mean and, yeah, and I, I love, love it. I did that, love it yeah. that was just and did you find like I don't know about you but again sit, sitting on that sofa watching the opening ceremony and the likes of like Super Saturday and that those like Max and all of that like I loved knowing that being able to watch that and get the experience and what it's going to be like and knowing that that's going to be us in a couple of weeks like for me that I think that created even more excitement because I was like oh wow like <clears throat> I'm about to go be those that athlete like I can't wait I can't wait to be even though it's nerve-wracking the pressure but also that excitement that buzz that adrenaline that that's going to be us in a couple of weeks yeah like I remember watching it and just you know it's really helpful actually to, to prepare <laughs> because you mm. could noise like obviously I don't really know what the noise was like in Beijing but I've never experienced noise like that so to hear it to hear it even on the telly um I was like right it's gonna be loud and I think that really helped me because I had a lot of teammates kind of a lot of us were new on the athletics team going to London a lot of our first games and I had a lot of teammates got on that start line and just froze like they were not ready for the noise they'd not expected it they'd not prepared for it at all whereas yeah, watching the watching Team GB, watching the Olympics, I was like, right, it's going to be noisy. So yeah. Yeah, let's just soak it up. I love I love being centre of attention anyway. So <laughs> and it massively helped with preparation and and definitely excitement. You know, just to to look at that and think, yeah, we're we're going to get that in a month's time. That's all going to be for us. I, I think know. you know if you'd have told Paralympians that's what it was going to be like ten years previous to London 2012, they'd be like, no, nah, it's not. Mm -hmm. and, it was look at it was massive it was it was it was i never really i don't think i ever really thought about all the tickets have sold out until i got there mm. and then you hear the stadium you hear you know the noise at the pool and you're like that's sold that's a sold out stadium for us i never had i think my biggest crowd prior to london 2012 was about 2000 people so it's a bit, a bit of a big step. You know? Oh, it is, isn't it? From 2,000 to 80,000. Like, that's a a massive, massive, <laughs> incredible difference, literally. How did you find it, like, that it was um, family and friends there? For me, like, some of my family and friends had never actually ever seen me swim. And so it was so nice that they were able to be part of that journey and part of me, part of that, and see the whole experience. But also knowing that they've seen, they've seen me race at... For the first time and yet it be it's a Paralympics like I loved it even though I, I didn't see them in the crowd or didn't didn't think about them at that time but afterwards seeing that they all had seen me swim was it was a really nice sentiment. You know what I again I think I was kind of the opposite I um that's where I felt the pressure like having family. Oh really? That's that's yeah that's where I felt the pressure um oh wow because my family and friends never really watched like aside from my mum and dad coming to my races in Britain I've never really had anyone travel and, and watch me compete so it's kind of that feeling of like oh I don't I don't want I don't want to let them down they've spent a lot of money to be here yeah. um, so 
yeah, I said to my mum and dad when they were buying tickets, because my mum and dad were always like, oh, you might go, we're going to buy tickets to the to the T3400 metres, like, you might be there. And I was like, nah, I won't. And I'd said to him, you know what, if I am there, I don't want to see you, I don't want to hear you, I don't want to know you're there. Um, so they literally bought, like, tickets to the back row of the stadium. Oh, wow. Back straight, like, furthest away from me they could be. Like, they listened to what I wanted. And <laughs> probably my biggest regret, you know, it's my oh, biggest really? crossing that finish line and not being able to see a single face that I knew. Like, oh. um, after the 200 metres so my second race, they said to me, like, oh, if you find your mum and dad, they can come and stand at the bottom of the podium and, like, get good pictures. I mean, there's 80,000 people. Yeah. Like, yeah. my mum and dad, like, yeah, because we obviously only bought two tickets because um, I was like, oh, I'll, just, I'll go and watch with, like, mum or dad. Um, and then, so my mum and dad ended up sat in one section, my brothers were in another, my grandparents were in another, so they were really spread out. Um, and, yeah, I, I, I didn't like, I didn't like the fact that they were there when I was actually racing and then it was yeah the biggest regret once I'd finished because all I wanted to do was see a see a friendly face like you'll know it's yeah. overwhelming when you've got 80,000 people just they literally just scream at you don't they? they just scream in your face and you're like wow this is a lot to explain right now. Um, but yeah I don't know like how did you feel did you sit your mom and dad where you could see them or did you have you no, got- I did so there's no difference <laughs> <laughs> no um to be honest I think that's what I missed in Tokyo and I didn't realize it um not having like them there I realized actually they're my comfort blanket they're having them there even though again at a game you can't really see them because you, you don't they're blended in with everyone else really but knowing that they're there is a massive comfort for me and I, I loved that like from all games and not just Paralympics but world championships Europeans like they go to local galas and um local championships and they're always sat like especially in, like Sheffield or Manchester where we used to race on on home turf it was they're always sitting in the same seat and I love that because I know even though I don't look at them I know that where they are do you know and for me that was comfort so just even though I didn't want to see them in London I knew that they were there somewhere and I felt like that was comforting. So again, knowing that they were there, plus um, all my family were there, I loved that. Like, I didn't feel the pressure. Like, I think if I, um, if they weren't there, I probably would have panicked more. <laughs> Where did we come in the medal table in part? In I think we came seconds, we come I think. Second. Yeah, I think it was really, we had a really successful games. I think, again, I think it was because, again, it was the crowd, wasn't it? And the home expectations and the home support. I think it just propelled Paralympic athletes to to give it that extra oomph and that extra level, knowing that it's you, it's your home game. So I think we actually did really, really well. And from my memories, <laughs> again, we've had three Paralympics games since, but um, I think it, I think it did really help. And also as well, the legacy afterwards too. It really, really helps because I know um, from from sport, from sport of swimming, there's so many individuals now that are Paralympians that watched London 2012 and were inspired. And I think it's not just the ins- inspiration of the next generation but that that's the legacy of the games given back and given back not just to the next Paralympians but sport in general and for I think what we did as Paralympians at that time and at that games was help disability people in society and be seen the same in a way and I think that really really helps because also before that, Beijing was, was yeah, it was in the media, but even before that, it was still, it, what Paralympics weren't really known about. And I think what London 2012 did was showcase not just us, but also help disability communities, the perception of individuals with disabilities. And I think, yeah, in society, it, it made a massive difference. Yeah, I think, to be honest, I don't think we had a choice of not doing well. I think yeah. every every stop was pulled out. Like, I remember we had the most incredible holding camp. Um, obviously, sponsorship just, it just went through the roof at that time, didn't it? Like, yeah. it had a sponsor and just the support was phenomenal. Like, as a team, 
no stone was left unturned. Like there was no points where they kind of went, oh, we don't, we can't really afford that. Everything was like, no question about it. Like if that's going to help your performance, let's do it. Let's, you know, as yeah. we racers, we had like, they did this big project. We didn't end up racing them, but um, they had like special chairs made for us. We had like personalized helmets made. We've not had any of that since, but it was literally like, I don't know if it was the same for you, but every box was ticked. Like, oh yeah, exactly. Every, every, goal was like yeah no worries let's just do it like I don't know did you get like a special swimming costume I don't know (laughs) yeah no it was like it was that it wasn't just the sport but it was that the whole support system wasn't it you weren't just thinking about the the being on the track or being in the pool but it was that whole the support system the the science the mental health the the psychology the everything was thought about it was like it was all like had to be the best to make you perform at your best and I think I really like that and you forget things like that as well like the the suits the um like we used to get spray tans because um <laughs> it used to be the case where like um if if you've got a tan you feel more confident about yourself don't you where since yeah. since that that's fizzled out do you know what I mean but it was like all those little extra things that you forget about but we did just because it was like all those extra things those little things make a huge huge difference they did and yeah I think just because of all that that's that's why we were successful and yeah I genuinely don't think that we we got given the option to not be high up that medal table but um I just think the job that Channel 4 did as well Mm -hmm. I mean obviously we didn't sit and watch the coverage um (laughs) a little busy but I still have people come and talk to me about it now like I still have people like I watched every day of that channel 4 coverage and just the way that they changed the way paralympic sport was shown i think i think that's changed paralympic sport for good you oh know, yeah hugely on the line i still have kids like oh yeah I search your races on youtube i like i watch them on there i go to schools now and kids i'm like so does everyone remember london 2012 and they're like <laughs> it sounds born in 2015 and i'm like mm-hmm, cool <laughs> no problem <laughs> the fact that you're speaking to kids that were born in 2015 and yet we had our greatest victories 10 years ago, like way before they were born. That I think that shows the power of Paralympic sport now. The fact that they know our names, they know what we do, what we did. And hopefully, like I, I definitely feel like my sport is getting slightly easier to get into. Um, yeah. Being like it was easier immediately after 2012, it was e- the easiest time to get into it and, and get the funding and, and get the equipment. But it's still way easier now than it was when I started sport. And I think just having that visual goal of this is where I could go. Like the first games I was in Beijing. I don't remember watching any Paralympic sport prior to that. And yet now every kid that you meet, whether they're sporty or not, seems to have watched the Paralympic games. They seem to know Paralympians' names. And uh, I think uh, it's it's amazing. It's something that I never thought would happen so I, you've been in this way longer than me <laughs> yeah and I think also again it's the education too isn't it I think not just the education of society but also the coaches as well like previously before London Paralympic athletes or disabled um, sports individuals and again in swimming you had if you wanted the best training you had to move to um to be with individuals like yourself with disabled athletes whereas now there's um disabled swimmers disabled sports and I, I can only speak for swimming but they're integrated with able-bodied sports and they're given the same coaching standard the, co- the same training but just because the coaches then are they're aware of like what dis- disability sport is and they know that they've got those goals and the the same ambitions to, to be represented at a Paralympic. So I think it's it's really educated so many different levels that if you get a disabled person in your pathway that you can coach them and, and it's not a scary situation. So I think it's it really helps in education and that also then helps inspire and you get the next generation of athlete, athletes because they've had really, really good training from the start and that pathway and that support throughout to, to, to become a Paralympian. Absolutely. I think acceptance as well, acceptance of disabled people, you know, like you said, in, in society, but also that that there are these options that we, we can go and, and be athletes, which is something that 
I definitely never dreamt of. You know, I started wheelchair racing when I was 15, so you'd already won a few gold medals by that point. Um, but I started wheelchair racing when I was 15, and it would scare me today if I met a kid that said they didn't have the chance to try para sport until they were 15 years old. Do you know what I mean? And I think that's what London did. It gave people opportunity. It made people accept disability. And, and I think, you know, you'll see it as much as I do now. It, our medals are seen as just as just as important, just as exciting as our Olympic counterparts. And yeah. It is just, it's amazing. You know, it's, it's the best feeling handing that gold medal over to someone to look at and you just see that whether they want to try sport or not, the the whole face just lights up. <laughs> Everyone always goes, it's so heavy. I and know, that's literally <laughs> the same question, isn't it? The same question. And you're like, yeah, I know yeah, it's very heavy. It's silver coated in gold. Like it's, it's, it's really, really precious. <laughs> do you think, I want to know like a question just from, from my, <laughs> my thoughts is, um, do you feel like um, disability in Paralympic sport has has changed for other Paralympians and Paralympics in in other nations? And what do you think? Um, again, we've got Paris, you've got LA. What could they do to highlight Paralympic sport? You know what? I think it has. I definitely think it's got better, um, but not. It hasn't taken the bigger step as we have in Britain. I think London changed it for us, and I think. You know, I really thought Tokyo was going to be the changing point. For yeah. It. Fortunately, it didn't happen in the way it should have. Um, and I really, I think LA is going to be massive. I think that's the games to watch. Oh, LA in 2028. LA, 2028, I think, is going to be the one where, you know, disability rights are still not quite there yet in America. There's still so much, uh, so much bad stuff around disability there. And I really think LA could be the changer for that. So I think that's the one that I'm kind of watching. But... I do just think like that London effect has affected the whole world in some way, you know, as I, again, I can only speak for athletics, but the amount of events we now have worldwide, the amount of competitors that are coming through, um, it's, it's always built over the last 10 years. And yeah, just, just opportunity, again, it's opportunity. People watch London 2012 because there was round the clock coverage and trying yeah. to happy to share that with other nations. And Ultimately, that's what Parasport always needed. It always needed that coverage, the good news stories, the not the focus on disability, but the focus on look what they did, look what they've done, look what they've won. Yeah, um, sports. And I think that's really changed a lot of perceptions. So I, I think it's got better, but have you seen the same effect in swimming? Um, yeah, ex extremely. I think, like you said, London 2012 was that catalyst and it was the starting point. I think it might have gone a bit back, taking a step back in 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 Rio and again I was like you I was I wished that um that the, the c word didn't, didn't have happened and because I think Tokyo would have been on par with London 2012 and sadly with Covid um uh, the crowds all that type of thing it's it didn't happen and it was different but I really hope that it does happen in the future with Paris and and LA but yeah like you said the, the amount of more athletes from other nations that are competing the chances the more chances to compete in in international scenes is has changed dramatically it's getting more competitive which is incredible yeah. and that's that's really really important because then that makes amazing viewing but again it's pushing the sport and Paralympians and athletes further and further to make it into elite so it, it makes it exciting for the audience to watch also, as well as, as when you're athletes, you're, you're, you're even more nervous and you know that, yeah, again, you've got to train even harder than what you have been doing previously. But it, it's great to see. So I do think it's it's getting better and better. And I do question, like, what can other nations be doing um, to do? to get it better like they did in London 2012 but again I think it's just having it on TV I think that's a massive thing if you get the all the TV channels that the awareness that the publicity of the Paralympic sport in all of the nations it's going to be it's going to be a force to be reckoned with absolutely and I think I think Paris is going to be big I'm excited for Paris you know, <laughs> yeah. it's close to London and I think I hope that a lot of British public will travel. I think they'll. I know I'm going to get the train down. And, exactly. And go I, watch. I think that they'll support it, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for that. I'm excited to see kind of how France deals with that, and I, I hope that athletes. Obviously, we've we've been there, we've experienced it now, and 
I always get asked questions like, oh, how does London compare to the other games? And we've said they don't compare. But I hope that Paris will, and I hope that the newer athletes coming through will, will speak to the likes of me or you or anyone else that kind of has been through all these games and and learn how to deal with it. Like, that was... I was lucky enough to have um, Chantelle Petitclair, um 14-time Paralympic champion, as my games coach at London. And her experience was invaluable to me at my first games. You know, she was the one who said to me, that crowd is there for you. Like, don't ignore it. Go and appreciate it. But then remember, you've got a job to do. And I think that just put me in the right, like, space of mind to be like, right, yeah. here to watch my performance. And I want to do a good job for them. And I think if, if we can pass on our advice to the younger people that are coming through, because let's be honest, like, we're both getting a bit old. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I've left the sport, so I'm all right. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I'm in Paris, my plan. <laughs> but um, I, I do think Paris could be huge. It's got the potential, absolutely. And we could. We I have the opportunity to hopefully see another London in my career. And you can come out of retirement. So there you go. Oh, no, I'm not going to come out of retirement. <laughs> but I'll be watching in the crowds, definitely. I did not miss it. <laughs> but um, it's great to learn to see like support Paralympics GB and you guys and it's it's so nice to see you guys doing your sport but yeah I'm I'm definitely not going to be um taking part but I'm going to be cheering and shouting at the sidelines 